Christina Marie Riggs, a mother whose actions shocked the nation, was executed for a crime that left a permanent scar on all who heard it. What drove her to commit such an unimaginable act? Join me as we unravel this tragic story, exploring the chilling details. Christina Marie Riggs was found guilty in November 1997 of killing her two children, Shelby Alexis Riggs, two years old, and Justin Dalton Thomas, five years old. Riggs grew up in Oklahoma City and was born Christina Marie Thomas in Lawton, Oklahoma. At the age of 14, she started using alcohol, tobacco, and Mary Jane, claiming that she had experienced SA as a child. At 16, she became pregnant with her first child, who she then put up for adoption. Riggs worked as a home health nurse and in a Veterans Administration hospital after earning her license as a practical nurse just after finishing high school. In a diary that Riggs kept while incarcerated, she said that her stepbrother molested her from the age of 7 to 13. She was abused by a neighbor when she was 13 years old. Following relationships with a sailor and a bar bouncer, Riggs started dating Timothy Thompson, a Tinker Air Force Base station employee. She found out she was pregnant once more in late October of 1991. The day before Thompson was to be released from the army, she informed him about the baby. The mother of the sentenced woman, Carol Thomas of Jacksonville, claims that Thompson initially refused to acknowledge the infant as his own. As he was home on leave, the expectant mother renewed her romance with the sailor John Riggs. Though their relationship was rocky from the beginning, John Riggs finally moved in with her. July 1993 saw the couple's marriage after she fell pregnant once more. On her wedding night, Christina miscarried. In December 1994, Christina and John Riggs welcomed their own daughter Shelby into the world. Christina Riggs secured employment at Baptist Hospital in Sherwood, Arkansas, after the couple relocated there in 1995 to be closer to her mother, who lived there. After Christina saw her husband hit Justin in the stomach, she divorced John Riggs. Riggs worked as a licensed practical nurse at the Arkansas Heart Hospital in Little Rock at the time her children were murdered. She picked up an antidepressant called Elevil on November 4, 1997, the last day she worked at the hospital. She also got potassium chloride and morphine. When she got back to her house in Sherwood, she gave her kids Elevil at around 10 o'clock that evening to help them go to sleep. Once they were unconscious, she gave Justin a potassium chloride injection. She gave him a morphine injection when he woke up sobbing in agony. She smothered him with a pillow after that failed to calm him down. Riggs said Justin tried to fight back while she was suffocating him. She chose to smother Shelby with a pillow after the incident with Justin and the potassium chloride. Shelby fought a little bit, she told the cops. After the killings, she carried the murdered children's bodies into her bedroom and arranged them on her bed. She wrote suicide notes to her sister, Rosanna Pickett, her mother, Carol Thomas, and her ex-husband, John Riggs. She then gave herself a potassium chloride injection and took a large dose of Elevil. She passed out on the floor of her bedroom from the medication. This was thought to have happened the same evening at 10.30 p.m. Riggs's mother tried to find her the next day, November 5, 1997, and showed up at her Sherwood home at roughly 4 o'clock. Along with her unconscious daughter, she discovered the two children's bodies. She called 911 immediately and paramedics arrived soon. After a while, at approximately 5.30 p.m., the paramedics transported Riggs to Baptist Memorial Hospital in North Little Rock, where her stomach was pumped and her condition was stabilized. As this was going on, the Sherwood police searched Riggs's house and discovered the used syringes, morphine, potassium chloride, bottle of Elevil, and suicide notes. Riggs's mother and sisters, along with other family members, made their way to the hospital and wanted to see her. Police officers and medical staff were told by the Sherwood Police Department not to allow her to speak with her relatives. Riggs's family hired a lawyer to represent her just after midnight. After getting in touch with the Sherwood Police Department, the lawyer instructed officers to refrain from talking to Riggs when he was not present. 
Detectives Charles Jones and Cheryl Williams from the Sherwood Police Department came to take Riggs' statement early on November 6, 1997. Detective Jones read the Miranda rights to Riggs and recorded an eight-minute statement at 9.20 a.m. In that declaration, Riggs admitted that she killed her kids and went into detail about the crimes, including the specifics of her attempted suicide. After being admitted to the hospital for a few hours, Riggs was transferred to the Pulaski County Jail. There were two counts of capital murder brought against her. She subsequently entered a not guilty plea due to mental illness or defect. Riggs argued that her insanity stemmed from depression and the stress she had while working as a nurse close to the Oklahoma City bombing site. Prior to her trial, Riggs filed a request to have the statement she gave to the Sherwood detectives in the hospital suppressed. She claimed that the drugs she was under made her confession involuntary and that her family had hired legal representation for her. Her motion claimed that taking the statement under these circumstances went against both her right to counsel and her right to due process of law. After hearing a recording of Riggs' statement, the trial judge rejected her motion, concluding that there was no proof of her having hallucinations. In addition, the court determined that she had been informed of her Miranda rights, that her statement was voluntary, and that she was adequately coherent. During the trial, Riggs' claim of mental incompetence due to severe depression was rejected by the jury, and she was found guilty on both counts of capital murder. In her testimony during the sentencing phase, Riggs requested that she receive a death sentence. She was given a death sentence by the jury on both counts. This court stayed Riggs' execution while it was decided whether or not she was capable of choosing between her life and death as she first declined to file an appeal. Riggs consented to appeal the guilt portion of her trial before the trial court could hold a hearing. She gave her lawyer instructions not to file an appeal for any of the matters pertaining to the penalty phase. In the initial statement she gave, this is what she said when asked why did she murder her children. Detective Jones, Christina, why did you do this? Riggs, because I wanted to die, but I didn't want to die and leave my kids behind or for them to be a burden to somebody else. I didn't want them to think I didn't love them and I didn't want them to grow up separately because they have two different daddies. And I knew if I passed away, they would be fighting my mother for custody and I didn't want that for nobody. Detective Jones, what made you decide to just go ahead and do it? Riggs, I just can't take it no more. I felt like I was out of control. Detective Jones, have you talked to anybody about this, your mom or anybody? Riggs, I've tried to talk to people about what I feel and what I think and they were just like, I don't have time right now, we'll do it some other time. The hardest times for Riggs were during her early incarceration in the county jail. Some female prisoners were furious that Riggs killed her kids while they were forced to live apart from their own. Following her sentencing, Christina was the only prisoner kept in the three-cell female death row unit at the Correction Department's McPherson unit at Newport. She was apparently properly taken care of. She was permitted to meet in a visitation hall close to her cell with her few visitors. Every time she left her cell, she was handcuffed and she communicated with her guest through a plastic window. She was allowed to do her hair and apply some makeup, and she was given the normal off-white prison scrubs and sneakers to wear. She had access to television and could read multiple books that her mother ordered for her each week. She had access to a tiny outside area next to her cell where she could work out. In an interview, she explained that dealing with the things she had done to her children, pictures of whom were hanging on the cell mirror, was difficult. She expressed to the interviewer her desire to pass away and be with her kids. After reviewing the case, State Governor of Arkansas Mike Huckabee decided not to step in. Three days before her execution, Christina was flown from the McPherson unit on female death row to the Cummins unit. The execution on May 2nd started 18 minutes late due to a problem locating a vein big enough to insert the catheters. Christina granted permission for the catheters to be inserted into her wrist veins. Her last words strapped to the gurney were, 
There is no way, no words can express how sorry I am for taking the lives of my babies. Now I can be with my babies as I always intended. I love you, my babies. The execution went without problems and she was declared dead in nine minutes since the start of the procedure. For her final meal, Riggs had a supreme pizza, a salad, fried okra, cherry limeade and a strawberry shortcake for dessert. She was the fifth female murderer executed in the US and the first female murderer executed in Arkansas since 1976. Please hit that subscribe button if you like my channel. See you next time. Bye bye.